Welcome back to First and Ten with Rams coach Brad Sherrod. I'm Jimmy the St. Christopher. Happy days are here again. It's the dawning of a new era with Coach Sherrod's first game, and it was a real nice win. Good ball game tonight, 34-24. The Rams, the unranked Rams in the NAIA, knocked off number 20, Lindsey Wilson, Kentucky, the Blue Raiders. Coach, 24-24 deadlock at the half shut him out in the second half for the 10 point win a lot to dive in to first of all what are your thoughts in your first game and your as a head coach and your first victory well i thought the kids really faced adversity from that first half and came out we challenged them uh at halftime and they responded and i told them that's that's football you're going to face adversity how you handle it will determine uh, what kind of team, what kind of season you will have. So I was real proud of the way they came out. I thought we did a better job on defense of stopping the run. We did a better job on offense of actually running the ball in, in time of possession. So it, it really, like, once you challenged them, those kids responded, and I'm really proud of them. Yeah, the Blue Raiders came out with a three-pronged running attack, and they were just you know, running right through the Rams' defense. What, uh, what do you do then to hold them to lesser yards, or what adjustments do you make to slow them down after that big first series? Well, you know, what I told those guys, they were in position to make plays. And we had a lot of missed tackles that first, that first series. So when you look at it, I just told the guys, I said, you're there to make the play. I said, now we just have to make the play. Like, fine, focus your eyes on the near help and make the plays. And I thought we got better at tackling. I thought our interior guys got better. We, uh, and we'll continue to keep getting better. Uh, but we've got to do a better job of holding our gaps. We had too many guys committed to the run uh, to, to allow that to happen. So I thought the second half, like I said, I think they had 127 yards rushing the first half, and I don't think they had 25 the second half. So uh, they did a better job of, of holding their gaps, being in their gaps, and getting off blocks and making plays. One of the strong points in the Rams' defense so far this year and going in I thought would be their secondary and they didn't let anybody down tonight. Dalen Rogers with a 92 yard pick six taking it to the house. He had en ended up with four solo tackles. He was one of our players of the game that Will Connerly and I were at the end of the broadcast going to name as player of the game but the other one or the other two actually were Arian Bott who had a big hit which in my mind was the turning point did you think that was the hit that uh, Bott caused the, the, the fumble when it was still tied at 24 was that the turning point in the game well I think anytime you get a turnover can change the momentum of the game those two interceptions those pick six at the first half they were big for us um, and we, we preach turnovers, you know, interception, calls and fumbles, you know, taking the ball away. And uh, Arian, you know, he, he does that in practice, you know. So we work it in practice. He actually tries to do it in practice and, and calls our running backs to fumble sometimes. So and then he just brought it to the game and did the same thing. So uh, that, he's a prime example that if you put these teachings to work on the things that we work on, you will see them show up in the game. And we need to get more guys doing that, to be honest with you. We mentioned Rodgers, Dalen Rodgers, big pick. Jaden James, he ended up being our player of the game. Not because Rodgers didn't have a good game, he did, as we mentioned, the four solo tackles, but Jaden Jones had the 45-yard pick six, so it's 14 points off turnovers on the pick six by Rodgers and Jones. And Jones also had three PBUs, passes broken up, and he had uh, six total tackles, four of those solos. So, I mean, this just got to, you know, be a game changer when you have the defense come flying off after those big, big picks, right? It is, you know, it's a, uh, like I said, it was impressive for those guys to do that, to, to you know, step in front of that ball and intercept that ball. Uh, it's been something we've been waiting to see. Mm -hmm. And, our, and our, our receivers, I think, are very talented. Mm -hmm. And in practice, that doesn't happen as much. It happens some. So for us to go out there, and I think it's good training for us from our receivers to have that competition in practice. And it just showed up tonight on the football field. So I'm proud of Jaden, the way he played. And uh, got that pick six. That was big for us. The PBUs were big for us. And we're, we're looking for him to continue to keep getting better. But So we have to keep working and stacking days uh, as the season goes. You know, he, he's, a, he's a young man. He's a young kid. So we need to just continue to keep stacking good days and good practices with him. On the other side of the ball, the other Rodgers, quarterback Carson Rodgers, no touchdown passes. He did have two picks, but his final line, he ended up with 16 out of 26 for 206 yards. 
two picks, no touchdowns. But how proud are you or him of him? I know he's, a, you know, you're high in his leadership and he has a lot of confidence. But how proud were you after he did make those two picks, those two turnovers, to come back and then to keep his head together and really, you know, lead the team down where they could score those early Caesar touchdowns? Well, that's a sign of a, of a champion, of a leader. You know, he, he had some, some mishaps with the interceptions and uh, he didn't allow that to bother him. And, and I think a lot of kids got to learn how to deal with that. When you have things that happen to you that you don't want to happen, that's adversity. And he faced it right on. And, um, but I knew, you know, he, he would take charge of the offense and continue to do the things that we needed to do. And so yeah, interceptions happen. You put the ball in the air, sometimes it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I'm proud that we didn't fumble the football tonight. Right. Right. I'm proud that we got turnovers. I thought our running backs and our receivers did a great job of protecting the ball. And I thought the defense did a great job of going after the ball. So interceptions happen. That's going stuff going to happen. I don't, you know, it's going to happen. But he did a great job of just overcoming that and, and being the leader that I know he is. And um, he is our leader. And we need to do a great job of protecting him. And we need to continue to keep doing a great job of running the football. The great Ernie Caesar has had great seasons, 20, 22 last year, maybe not as much as 22, but he's great out of the backfield. He reduced his number to three. He used to be, I think, 22, but he's down to three now. But he had those two touchdowns that Rodgers and the Rams offense got the Rams close to score, close in. Only 55 yards rushing, but again, the offensive line was revamped. I know he made a couple of changes. Ogden Morrison didn't play tonight, and yet to change on the left side, but how proud are you were of you of you were you of the offensive line? I mean, only 55 yards rushing, but when it counted down close, and they protected Carson pretty well too. Yeah, they, they they'll continue to keep getting better. I am proud of them. I, I, that was an experienced team, and they did a great job against them. We'll get better as the weeks go on. Um, once they start gelling and, and getting comfortable with each other, and the communication piece of it. We will get better, and uh, I, I thought I was proud of them. They had some some mistakes up there, but you know what? They bounced back too. They didn't allow that to affect them the next play, and uh, once again, that helped us in the second half. That was big for us, and I thought AMJ went in there and did a great job of running mm -hmm. the football and ran it hard. Uh, we needed that, and and did a great job of controlling the clock and eating up eating up the clock and getting some yardage. Kicking, special teams, some special teams returns by the Blue Raiders, which I'm sure you talked about that being one of the keys, create turnovers and, you know, run the ball and hang on to it and then do good on special teams. Special teams, you know, Diego was Char Charveria. I want you to talk about him. He big leg with all the kickoffs after all the touchdowns and then kicking those field goals. But, boy, last year Garrett Blodgett was kicking field goals during practice, like from 60 yards mm -hmm. and one from 57 during a game. But how about Diego? That kid's got a big leg. Yeah, he did a great job. You know, came in there and we kind of – I felt comfortable like putting him out there. I knew we were going to get some points when he went out there. So I was real proud of the way he responded the first time out there kicking in college. So uh, he did a great job and had a good poise and – uh, he was ready on the sideline, so I was I was really proud of that. Kicking wise, special teams. I was a little disappointed in our kickoff cover. I thought we gave up way too many yards there. We have to get that fixed. Um, and I think it's really more just you know avoiding to the football. You know, I always talk about keep the ball inside and in front. And I don't think we did a very good job of that squeezing to the football tonight. Uh, punt protection was okay. Still was some leakage. But you know what I was proud of there? Those kids. Came to the sideline. I was call, I was calling the the, uh, the the punt and the formation and the protection. And they came to me and said, Coach, they're coming off the right side. And they said we need to change the protection. And I just thought that was such heads up football by them. And I listened mm -hmm. and I did what they said. And they did a great job of protecting. That's probably our best night of protecting that, that that one play. So I'm so proud of the way they're into the game and involved and paying attention and able to communicate to me what's going on. So I'm, I'm just real proud of them for doing that. And the Rams, boy, three penalties for 18 yards. Conversely, the Blue Raiders, 10 for 97. Well, it was almost like it was Christmas <laughs> in August with all those penalties. Have you ever been in a game where you had that many gifts? I mean, from uh, just all kinds of all kinds of penalties, and you name it, and they were having penalties, which were stopping drives, yeah. you know, by them, which you know was really a, a detriment for them, but. Uh, have you ever seen a game like that before yeah. where a team made 97? Yeah, you know, we always talk about no, no pre-snap or post-snap penalties. 
you know, don't, don't do anything that's going to stop a drive or keep a drive going. And, and I thought our kids did a great job of that tonight. We didn't get any kind of, after the ball whistle was blown, any kind of altercations or in someone's face. Or we didn't, I think we might have jumped off one that kind of got us because they were calling out the signals and the second time the refs called them. Uh, so uh, we talk about those things. We had one uh, pre-snap penalty when we ran outside on the kickoff cover team, which allowed, they forced us to kick again. And normally when they force you to kick again, chances are you can give up a touchdown, and we did. So we just can't have those pre-snap and post-snap penalties. And I thought we did a good job of overcoming those. Um, so we only had three penalties tonight. And, and um, like I said, I'm proud of the way those guys responded. And that's, we got to play clean. You have to play clean in order to continue to keep winning in this league. How did you like when they stayed out of third and long the Rams? There wasn't too many of those right. tonight. Right. Well, it's important to stay on schedule, you know. And uh, a friend does a great job. And there were some situations down there. I made some decisions to go for it on fourth down. Uh, just because I was just like, I thought we had a chance to really get the first down or score the touchdown that we did. And uh, our offense line doing a great job. And I believe in Carson. And I believe in our receivers that when we put that ball in the air, they're going to catch it. And they did tonight. So I was real proud of them. We'll talk about the OU, or the, I should say the O Arizona University, mm -hmm. OU Arizona University game. That's coming up next a week from Saturday. This game tonight was on a Thursday night special. Was there any motivation for not being listed in the top 25 of the NAIA, not even one vote for the Rams where uh, Lindsey Wilson, Kentucky was 20th to start out. They were 19th last year. They got as high as seven. But is that any extra motivation when you see a team that you know you think is should be in top 25 because it's really not that much of a difference mm -hmm. team. But how much does that motivate you? Nah, you know what? We we focus on what we can control. You know, what we control is how we practice, how we prepare, and then how we play. And if we do what we're supposed to do and play well and win, then that will happen for us. We can't control the votes. But I, I just want to make sure every week that we, we, we prepare and practice in a way like champions do and prepare and give ourselves a chance to win the game on Saturday. And our guys did that tonight. They, the way they practiced for the last two and a half, almost three months, um, and put it, put it all together. And it wasn't all great. Had some days that weren't great, but had some days that were. And really showed some really signs of improvement. And I think I thought we saw some flashes of that tonight. But they just stacked days on top of days. And I said, let's just keep doing that. Let's just work that, work mm -hmm. that, worry about ourselves. And all the good stuff will come. It'll come. I really believe that. Coach Rod's first game as a head coach, it's a W when I guess some people didn't think that they would stand a chance against a highly ranked team like the Blue Raiders. But... I guess it's got to make you feel, but how does it feel to get a victory in your first game as a head coach? Well, you know, it, it, it feels great, you know, just to get that win, and you know, that's something you, you know, you've never done, never done this before. So to get that win and and to to move on, the way the kids played and the way they responded, and it's all the things you want your kids to do, right? And we just need to stay humble and keep working. You know, I, I thought in the first half. We got kind of lax a little bit, mm -hmm. and and then once we started getting some momentum in that second half, I said, stay focused on what we're doing, and that's what we need to do every week. We never need to take our foot off the pedal on how like pushing ourselves and pushing each other to get better, and just stay humble and do those things, and not worry about polls, not worry about what someone else is doing. Just be concerned about what we're doing and take care of ourselves. As we said earlier, it was 24-24 at the half. What did you and the coaches tell them, the Rams, at halftime? Well, I challenged them uh, to stop the run. Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, I said, we're in position. We need to stop the run. Football is very simple. Mm -hmm. It comes down to tackling, catching the ball, and scoring touchdowns with it. And that's it. And we need to run the ball better. And I just said those two things. I said, we, we're there. We need to make the tackle. Stop the run. And I, and I asked the offense to continue to, to try to run the football. And they did. And I thought our kids paid attention to that when, about stopping the run. Because once we made them one-dimensional and forced them into passing, it allowed us to get a pass rush and allowed our guys to sit back in coverage and react. Next up, as we said, Ottawa University, Arizona, out in beautiful Surprise, Arizona. They have great facilities out there. That'll be on Saturday the 7th, so the first road trip. What do you see in them? And they're always good. I mean, they're seven years of existence. They always go, you know, to the postseason or, you know, fight for the top spot in the Sooner. And they were 16th ranked going in. So how do you see the spirit going into this game? Well, we should be excited about going to Arizona to play. I mean, they're a good yeah. football team. We have another challenge. And that's why I say we need to stay humble. This is one game. This does not make or break our season. 
And uh, I told the kids that also before the game. You know, we just need to focus on what we do. Uh, they're a very good football team. Uh, Coach has, Desmond has done a great job out there. They're going to be very talented and have some guys at the receiver spot and, and try to run the football as well. And I think their quarterback is really talented from what I've seen so far. Um, they haven't played a game yet. Um, we'll be their first, so they have had some time to prepare for us. But we're excited to go and travel there. It's a good experience for the kids. And uh, I've been to Phoenix before, but never to Ottawa. So it's going to be good, good surprise, good uh, experience for me as well. So I'm excited about going. I know our guys are, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll just go out there and play our best. Yeah, that's a crazy place to play. That's really a community team there and surprise. So do you do anything in practice, like play loud music or play uh, loud soundtracks of fans? Or is there anything you do to, you know, combat going into a tough environment like that? You know, we focus on ourselves. Um, it's going to be loud, and I, we, you know, today's football, especially on defense, there's a lot of hand signals to each other. That's how you communicate, you know, because that's what we teach them. You know, regardless, I thought our crowd was great tonight. You know, I looked in the stands, yeah. I thought we had a great crowd tonight. Uh, but we teach our guys to go ahead and communicate with hand signals anyway, so that's how we communicate. Um, but it'd be a, a good experience, you know, to have that fan experience on top of us and against us. You know, we had a great fan experience tonight. They were for us, and uh, that'd be a good experience. Good, good good uh, adversity test for us as we go go through. And they have Luke Jerome, their quarterback, back. So what do you think of Luke? Like I said, I think he, he's really talented. You know, he does a great job of throwing the ball, great job of running the football. Uh, we're going to have to do a great job up front of containing him and keeping him in the pocket. And when he does run, we're going to have to make sure we rally to him and, and, and get him to do those things. Uh, you know, he's a dual threat. And those sometimes they're the worst quarterbacks to defend, you know. Yeah. So once they, if they can throw and run, that's a little issue there. But I, but. I think we got some good guys up on ourselves that can get, can handle that, and um, I'm excited about going going in there, and I'm sure they're excited about playing us, be their first game as well. So it should be a good game. On defense for them, linebacker Isaiah Cotton and defensive back Trey Overton. How do you go about attacking them? Well, I think we're gonna have to do what we do, and uh, we can't really, um, you know be our concern about who they are, even though they're, they're really good football players. We need to focus on how we run the ball and, and focus on those things and how, then how we protect our quarterback when we want to throw it. And I think as long as we do those fundamentals things, well, that will be fine. But they are talented on defense as well, and they have a lot of speed on defense. So, I, but like I said, I think our receivers are pretty fast too. So I'm excited about seeing the matchup. And that's a big rivalry, the Rams and, and the Spirit. And they both tied along with uh, Louisiana College last year, three tri co winners of, of the Sooner. Is that any? Does that add to the rivalry? Like the Rams are going, well, we got to beat these guys because they tied us last year. The Spirit are going, we got to beat these Rams because they tied with us last year. Does that does that add to the, I guess, the hatred of each other? No, I don't, I don't. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm new to this, but. Uh, I think the, the opportunity to continue to, to for our goals, what our goals are, and to accomplish our goals, uh, has to be our motivating factor. And once again, I said, like, how do you accomplish those goals? It's how you prepare, how you practice, and how you play the game. And we can never lose sight of that. We can't start going in thinking about winning a championship and we have a second game of the year. We need to focus on Ottawa and, and focus on those guys because if we do everything we're supposed to do, that will come. But we got to take it one game at a time and just keep building as we go. Games on Saturday, the 7th of September. Now, do you go out a couple days early, like on that Thursday? No, we'll go out Friday. We'll fly out there Friday. Uh, we'll get there early enough so the guys can jump in the room and lay down a little bit and do those things. And um, I think we'll be acclimated to the time change uh, when we get out there. Uh, uh, we're doing some things here to help ourselves with that. Right. But uh, I want to get them set there so they can be there. And, and then once we get there, and, and we're going to go to the stadium that Friday and, and check it out and, and then just get ready for the football game. Now, when will you leave? Will you, you will come back Saturday night after we'll, we'll come, come right back, back Sunday? We'll come, come back right back. after. It'll be Sunday. But okay, we'll, yeah, we're going to go to the airport right after the game, and it'll be Sunday morning time we get back. What do you need to improve on from what you saw in the victory tonight before the game with Ottawa? Well, defensively, we need to do a better job stopping the run early. Um, that first series against Lindsey Wilson, you know, they kind of ran it down. Yeah. They ran it yeah. down our throat a little bit. Uh, so we need to do a better job of stopping the run. I thought Coach Houston did a great job of adjusting and getting that, getting that taken care of. Offensively, we need to do a better job of running. That's not going to change. Every week we have to stop the run. We've got to run the football. We can't turn the football over and we've got to get some turnovers. That's not going to change. We've got to be better on special teams. Those things, will, those things we have to do 
week in and week out and continue to keep talk to our kids about that. And But like I said, I'm proud of the way they responded. We'll get it cleaned up. I know these guys, they'll get it cleaned up. And uh, my coaches are doing a great job with that. And we know where we need to get better. And we will. Now, do you do like they do in the NFL on a game on Thursday if they win? They give them off till Monday? No. We're, <laughs> going, we're going to practice tomorrow. Okay. Um, it'll be a light practice, but we're going to practice tomorrow. Um, and I'll give them some time off after that, and we'll come back Sunday and, and practice. Um, but the kids have been great. I think having a, a day to themselves will be important for their bodies. And uh, tomorrow I just want to really, you know, get some of that lactic acid out and run a little bit and um, lift. I want to do those things and just get any corrections made that we can get made from special teams. I think it really comes down to fundamentals and get those things corrected. And... Uh, we will do some offense, defense, just some correction stuff that we saw in the game, and then we'll we'll give them a little, give the kids a break, and then we'll come back Sunday for another practice. When do you start putting in the game plan? Like right away, like on yeah, we'll Saturday well as a, we won't, we'll probably put it in on Sunday. Um, we'll game plan tomorrow on Saturday as coaches. Uh, we'll do a little light introduction of Ottawa, uh, but then on uh, Sunday we'll really put the game plan in. Coach, go celebrate this one. Get some time off, put in that game plan for Ottawa, and go beat the spirit. I appreciate it. We're going to enjoy these tw next 24 hours and right back at it. All right. We'll talk to you when you get back. Good luck out in Arizona. For Coach Brad Sherrod, for Kenneth Flowers, for Ricky Dotson, James McBride, Shallon Anderson, and my partner tonight in play-by-play, -play, the color analyst, Will Connerly. For everybody here at Texas Wesleyan, happy days for the Rams, the dawning of the new era. So I told you you'd get it right with the right hand. <laughs> it's a victory. 34-24, the Rams beat 20th-ranked Lindsey Wilson, Kentucky, the Blue Raiders. We'll talk to you next time on First and Ted. Adios.